Now we have something called a double integral. If you like integrals, you're going to love these twice as much because they're double. Now this looks, again, like this hideous, monstrous uh, you know, thing, but really we're just going to break it down. When we break it down, it's going to be, uh, well, not so bad. So first of all, when you have a double integral, so, so you, you go from the inside to the outside. So here I have the integral of x squared y squared dx, and that's inside the bigger integral of integral of this blob dy. So first we do, so we always go from inner to outer. It's, it's similar to when you have parentheses inside parentheses. You always start with the inner parentheses first. So I'm focusing on what's inside here. Now the integral of x squared y squared dx. Remember now, since I'm, di since I'm integrating with respect to x, just like we did in partial derivatives, I'm going to treat the y squared like a constant, and I'm just really going to get the antiderivative of x squared, which we all know is x cubed over 3. So that's going to leave me uh, with this. I now have this whole middle thing. This whole middle thing just turned into x cubed over 3 times y squared, because the y squared is just a constant, it just comes down, and the x squared becomes x cubed over 3. Now, I don't do any plus c here. When it, with a double integral, we are going to do a plus c, but we saved that for the very end. Now, I integrate this guy dy, but again, once I'm integrating dy, that means the, I'm, I'm going to treat the x like as a constant. So the x cubed over 3 is just going to come down for the ride, and what's going to happen is that well, well, y squared is going to become y cubed over 3. And there's a 9 there because the 3 that's already under the x and the, th and the new 3 that's going to come from the uh, y is um, my thing. Now, here's the, here's the interesting, uh, different part. <laughs> when I do a plus c, instead of just doing a plus c of a constant, I'm doing plus c of x. Because if there's any, because if I would start with any, if I had x cubed y cubed over 9, and I add any function of x, something that's a function of x, it doesn't have any, but not of y. Well, when I take the derivative of this final answer, this whole guy is going to disappear. So, so, um, and if I, so therefore, if I had that c of x, because my first, because my first step was, was, is, is with respect to y. So that's why I'm adding not just c, but c of x, because anything, if I had, for example, I had x cubed, y cubed over 9 plus uh, x to the ninth power. Well, if I would take the derivative here with respect to y, that x to the ninth power would completely disappear because it would be considered a constant. That's why it's not just a c of a regular constant, but any function of x is, will, will be treated like a constant. And that's why I wrote c of x, not just c. I'm spending a lot of time explaining it, but it's very important. It's very subtle. Now, let's, let's take the same problem. Let's take the same example and now make it a, a definite integral instead of an indefinite integral. So I'm integrating, well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start from the inside. It's just that when I start from the inside, it's going to be a definite integral, so I'm going to do all that definite stuff. So let, let me show you what's going to happen. So we have this guy uh, right here, uh, because that's, that, was that, that was when I first integrated with respect to x. I got x cubed over 3 times y squared. Remember, the y squared was a constant, so just very similar to before. But I have to evaluate it between 0 and 1 because that's what that was was inside that blob. Now that's going to equal uh, this. So this guy here is equal to 1 cubed y squared over 3 minus 0 cubed y squared over 3 dy. And that simplifies to just y squared over 3 because that's, that's 0. The whole thing disappears. That 1 is just, well, it's just 1. So it's y squared over 3. And I'm integrating this now dy from zero to one, and that's gonna give me uh, y cubed now over nine. Why nine? Because it's really y cubed over three, but I already have a three, so the three times three is nine. Evaluate it between zero and one, just like, it would, would, just like I would with any other um, definite integral. And that's, of course, just gonna be one ninth minus zero, which is just one ninth. My final answer is one ninth. So what does this uh, problem have to do with classical music? Because there was Beethoven's ninth, and this problem is one ninth.